Hello. Through this presentation, we shall now see what is transformation of sentences, especially the simple, compound and complex sentences. We shall see through this presentation how one form could be transformed to another form. What are some of the rules to be followed in case we have to do the transformations? So, we are going to see how this is done through some of the slides. Okay. So, now first we need to revise some concepts before we go on to the transformation proper. Let's understand the difference between a phrase and a clause. Well, a phrase is a group of words in a sentence that has no well-defined subject and predicate. Okay, it's very clear that they do not have a subject and a predicate, well-defined one at that. Now, some examples for this one example I'll show you here. He has a plant of immense value. So now what is underlined here is of immense value. But if you see here, he has a plant is a proper sentence by itself. Whereas, wherein he, he is the subject and has a plant is the predicate. But of immense value is a phrase because there is no subject that you can identify here properly okay so there's no subject and no proper predicate and therefore this is a phrase of immense value is a phrase take a look at the next one clause a group of words in a sentence that has a well, that has well defined subject and predicate so we should definitely see an, an example based on this he has a plan that has immense value Earlier, of immense value was underlined. Now, here let us see he has a plant. This plant is same in both. But here let us see what is underlined. That has immense value. Now, here this that has immense value has one word that which stands for the word plant. And therefore, that is a pronoun. It's a relative pronoun. Hence, it's also called a subject. And has immense value since has is a verb. It starts with a verb. Predicates always begin with a verb. Hence, has immense value is a predicate. So, thus we see we have revised the concept of phrase and a clause. This is very important in order to understand how to make so, so, uh, compound and complex sentences as well as simple sentences. Okay, so we need to understand this difference. Now, why should we know clauses? Because clauses are the ones that differentiate between the three types of sentences. Now, let us see what are the three types of clauses here. Adjective clause, wherein Mary had a lamb that followed her everywhere. That followed her everywhere is qualifying the noun lamb. Hence, it is an adjective clause. In noun clauses, Mary said what? That her lamb followed her everywhere. This that her lamb followed her everywhere functions as a noun or a pronoun because they are answering the question what? Mary said what? That her lamb followed her everywhere. Take a look at the last one, adverb clause. Now, adverb clause also there are different types. Noun clauses there are five types. Adverb clauses there are many types or, or rather eight types. Anyway, the basic concept is this. Mary's lamb followed her wherever she went. Wherever she went is answering the question where. It is adverb clause of place. Okay. And therefore, it is called an adverb clause. Fine. Now that we have revised phrases and clauses, and we have seen the three types of clauses, namely adjective clause, noun clause and adverb clause. We shall revise now the next thing that is essential to understand the simple compound complex transformations. So, what is a simple sentence? It has one independent clause or a main clause. It is one independent or a main clause. Compound sentence is the one which has two independent clauses, that is two independent sentences joined by a conjunction. Complex sentence is the one which has one independent clause, that is one main clause that can stand on its own 
and the other clause that is there it cannot stand on its own it's a dependent clause it's a subordinate clause that is why we revised the three types of clauses in the previous slide all right so we have to know the what is the clause then only we'll be able to understand simple compound and complex then we needed to understand the different types of clauses because the different types of dependent clauses are there in a complex sentence okay so now we can proceed to start our transformations now look at this sentence the soldiers fought a fierce battle yet we'll just revise a little more there's a subject here the soldiers fought is one single verb and fought a fierce battle is the predicate okay now this is if you see here there is one independent main clause independent or a main clause and it's called a simple sentence take a look at the second one the soldiers fought a battle and it was fierce okay now here you can see very clearly there are two subjects see here one subject one predicate another subject another predicate so very clearly you have two sentences the soldiers fought a battle it was fierce these are two main clauses or independent clauses and they are joined together using a coordinating conjunction so see here two independent or main clauses joined by a conjunction is a compound sentence similarly see the third one the soldiers fought a battle that was fierce so see fought a battle is same in all three the soldiers fought a battle now that was fierce is the second part all right so this is the first part which has its own subject and predicate now look let us take a look at the second part that was fierce in this there is a subject that which stands for the word battle and was fierce is the predicate so this also has a subject and predicate however that was fierce is that group of those group of words that cannot stand on its own but it has a subject and predicate hence it's called a dependent clause and such a sentence where there is one main clause and one dependent clause is called a complex sentence okay so if you have to transform any simple sentence to compound then you should see to it that you get a conjunction in between and if you want to transform it into a complex sentence then you should ensure that there is a dependent clause okay and if you want to convert any compound or complex to simple then you have to ensure that there is only one subject and one predicate okay so let's again continue all right so whenever you do simple to compound which means from a smaller to compound or complex sentence what would you do look at this balloon is expanding so you will expand the sentence you will take one word and you will expand it okay so you will select the word and expand it accordingly this will happen when you're converting simple to compound or complex but when compound or complex you know that they are huge sentences there are two main clauses in a compound in a complex one main clause and one subordinating clause so when you have to make it simple you have to contract it okay so you have to contract something that is inflated you have to contract it you have to bring it down make it smaller or reduce okay so now with this understanding let's proceed to understanding the transformations now there are some general rules which you need to know when you're transforming sentences let's see what is that either you expand when you're making from simple to compound complex or you reduce when you're making compound complex to simple either you expand or you reduce a word or a phrase never change the tense the tense does not change only the structure of the sentence changes and never change the meaning in any transformation meaning should not change tense should not change if the tense changes the meaning will change okay and then you also please check the punctuations where they should come where the comma should be placed all this is very important when we do this transformations okay let's see now how do you transform to compound there are some basic rules that you need to know when you transform to compound we know that we have to use coordinating conjunctions so we can use this fan boys that is these are coordinating conjunctions for example for and no but or yet and so these are the fan boys uh, 
conjunctions or the coordinating conjunctions or you can use correlated these are also called you know conjunctions used together they are correlated they are one correlating with the other wherein neither nor either or both and not only but also they are used in one sentence huh? not this but that okay whether or no sooner than okay these are correlative conjunctions you use them also these conjunctions also you can form a compound sentence so this is a rule i mean this is what you can keep in your mind whenever you have to form a conjunction uh, compound sentence okay so don't be lost remember these conjunctions are there for your help when you have to make anything compound sentence and when you are making complex also there are conjunctions involved which are called subordinating conjunctions that is if even if though although when where so that because that as as if as soon as okay also relative pronouns such as which who whose that etc all right so these are some of the things now relative pronouns why they are called because they are related to some noun before that they are also called relative pronouns or coordinating conjunctions they can also come be placed as that okay so now we can start with transforming simple to compound i have shown some examples that are already start transformed then we will go on to see the rules okay let us see this on seeing the policeman the thief fled away that's a simple sentence see the compound the thief saw the policeman so he fled away so there is a coordinating conjunction here from among the fan boys okay so he fled away so i have made it compound all right see seeing the policeman the thief saw the policeman so he fled away and here the thief fled away as he saw the policeman now as he saw is uh, why the thief fled away as he saw the policeman so because he saw the policeman so it is add a clause of reason okay so it's a complex sentence see this now in spite of running she missed the train all right so here it's a simple sentence she ran but she missed the train so you are now using the coordinating conjunction but she missed the train now here complex is though she ran she missed the train okay in spite of running so whenever in spite of then though although will come here add a clause of concession all right or contrast that's a complex sentence all right so now we will see some rules of transformation of simple compound and complex sentences here this is the first rule that we are doing look at what is underlined hearing the bell okay these are verbs which have an ing in them okay hearing the bell so which means this is a participle hearing okay this is a participle where there's a verb and ing present participle see what happens the children heard the bell and rang out okay and the complex is when the children because you very clearly this is telling when did the children run out when they heard the bell correct so when the children heard the bell they ran out you must understand the meaning what is the sentence trying to tell you is it giving your time reference is it giving your place reference what is it trying to tell you okay let's see the next one picking up his bag raju left for home so i very clearly we are talking about verbs that end with ing that is a participle form of the verb okay picking up his bag so now how would the compound be raju picked up his bag and left for home okay and so then how would you say that after picking up his bag okay after raju picked up his bag so you should have no you will not say after picking up his bag because there has to be a proper subject and predicate in a complex sentence so after raju picked up his bag so raju is a subject picked up his bag is a predicate so therefore that would become a clause okay after raju picked up his bag he left for home all right so now this is how you make the complex sentence both are actually if you see here both are adverb clause of time anyway so what's the rule here some examples we will try and solve she completed her work and went to play so you should know where it should come anyway this is on completing her work she went to play after she completed her work she went to play so where should each go okay so let's see whether we are right she completed her work and went to play is a compound sentence 
on completing her work she went to play simple after she completed her work she went to play so what's the rule verb plus ing that is a participle then compound will take an and and here it will be when or after add a clause of time okay so rule 1 is understood let us go on to rule 2 okay rule 2 look at now what we are coming to without we are coming to words such as without okay without working hard you will not succeed that means what work hard or you will not succeed okay work hard or you will not succeed and if without working hard you will not so what's the condition to succeed if you do not work hard you will not succeed okay so if say the next sentence in the event of not having a job that means without having a job she will starve so without can also be written like this in the event of not having a job okay but then since it becomes wrong people put the word without a job okay but you can also have sentences like this in the event of so then again the same way else you can use the word else she should have a job else she will starve else also has the meaning of or so here it is now see here if she does not have a job she will starve which means we are forming here adverb clause of condition without and in the event of is showing you some condition here okay there is a condition so very clearly you will form an adverb clause of condition here and in compound or and else are the options that we have let's take a look here practice well else you will not win so you know where it should go without practicing well you will not win and a third is if you do not practice well you will not win they are not put in the proper places let's shift them okay see here and here it goes all right so these are the rightful positions of these sentences now let's see here so whenever there is without or in the event of plus verb and ing can you see here there's a verb with ing here also verb with ing then you have or or else and if is the one okay add a clause of condition all right so we go on to rule number three now what is it all about by boycotting means now you're coming to words with by and a verb plus ing by boycotting british goods the indians sent a message so how did they send a message by boycotting the indian goods the indians boycotted british goods and sent a message you see here the indians sent a message when they boycotted british goods okay when did they send a message when they boycotted the british goods okay now let's see the next one by reading aloud you will improve your pronunciation by reading aloud okay so here it is read aloud and you will improve your pronunciation and see here if you read aloud you will improve your pronunciation okay so that means if you read aloud you will improve your pronunciation or you will improve your pronunciation when you read aloud anyway it would be correct so if or when you can use now mix the ingredients well and make a smooth paste and i think this is the rightful position because there is and here okay so this is a correct position make a smooth paste by mixing the ingredients well so see the same thing from compound i made it simple make a smooth paste by mixing the ingredients well and how do you make it complex okay you can make a smooth paste if you mix the ingredients well or when you mix the ingredients well okay now see here so there's a by and a gerund and gerund is nothing but a verb with an ing so by plus gerund will always have an and and if and when all right either if you can use or when you could use all right so this is the third rule now let's take a look at the fourth rule see this in spite of reading well this should be very simple for you okay in spite of so how will it be she read well but she did not pass okay so in spite of will become but and in complex naturally though or although though she read well she did not pass 
let's see here despite being poor he looked after his daughter in spite of or despite despite being okay being is a verb of course it's a participle but here he was poor but he looked after his daughter although he was poor he looked after his daughter so you see here they wrote a letter but no one paid heed to it so if what will you write here in complex though they wrote a letter no one paid heed and in spite of writing a letter no one paid heed okay so whenever in spite of or despite comes then but is the compound comes in the compound and here it would be adverb clause of concession though or although take the fifth rule now fifth rule is because of his foolishness he lost the game so here it is because of is underlined but you must not you must understand i'll come to the complex you will see again because is used so then we'll see what's the difference okay so he was foolish so he lost the game so it is so which is the conjunction used here now see here because he was foolish he lost the game so now you'll tell me what's the difference now because of his foolishness of his foolishness may have probably a subject but where is the verb here so there is no predicate it's simply a phrase so a simple sentence can have a phrase but it will not have a clause all right see here because here you are having a dependent clause because he was foolish all right he is the subject was foolish is the predicate so this whole thing is adverb clause of reason okay he lost the game now she got the job because of her qualification so again because but it is a simple sentence it's a phrase because of her qualification is a phrase so definitely it's a simple sentence next one she was qualified so she got the job and in complex it would be she got the job as she was qualified why she got the job as she was qualified so you're forming adverb clause of reason all right now let's take a look at this they were selected because they were diligent they were diligent so it's a clause here very clearly it's a clause okay so the position has to come there next one they were diligent so they were selected is the rightful position they were selected because of their diligence okay so what's the rule here because of plus noun phrase okay then it becomes uh, the, then you take the conjunction so and here it will become adverb clause of reason using because since or as plus but please ensure that there is a subject and a predicate here okay now so this is the these are the five rules that we have done just now okay we now move on to rule number 6 let us see what is there in this rule let's understand properly see here rima studied hard in order to qualify so what is the underlined word here words here in order to okay so in order to qualify so how will you write the compound rima studied hard so she could qualify all right so that she could qualify so she could qualify okay so so you are using the coordinating conjunction so okay now here rima studied hard so that she could qualify so you are putting the word that here so it becomes what now it becomes a complex sentence okay so that see here he saves money in order to so the same phrase in order to buy a car now here he saves money so he can buy a car and here he saves money in order that so in not is either you put so that or in order that okay so either so that or in order that he can buy a car so he guards the border so we can have peace fine so let's see how its complex looks he guards the border that we can have peace or so that we can have peace or in order that we can have peace and the simple will look th- like this he guards the border to have peace for us or in order to have peace for us all right so in order to or to okay in order to now here it is only to okay in order to or if it is only to then you have the compound with the so in order that or that 
all right so even if you get a complex sentence like this he guards the border that we can have peace immediately the peace the simple should be he guards the border to have peace for us or in order to have peace for us okay so we have to understand this in order that or so that this is adverb clause of result okay so that uh, sorry it's a adverb clause of purpose all right in order that so that it is adverb clause of purpose okay fine now we go on to rule number 7 look here it is too good to be true too 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 good to be true all right now it is very good so it cannot be true so which is the conjunction here very is there yes but so is the conjunction it is very good now why did i underline very because it had to match with two okay you cannot say it is too good so it cannot be true it could it is very good so it cannot be true okay next is it is so good that it cannot be true now this is adverb clause of result it is so adjective good that it cannot be true this is adverb clause of result because we know that in order to understand all the various clauses please visit our channel and there is a, a complete presentation on the various types of clauses okay they were too noble not to attend to her okay not to so here they were very noble so they attended to her so they were too noble not to attend no but they were very noble that is why they attended okay so they attended now they were so noble that they attended to her okay so this is how we form he is so weak that he cannot recover where should it come not here it should come in the complex so and that okay here he is too weak to recover where should it go well it is a simple okay too and too too weak to recover so here it would be he is very weak so he cannot recover so two dash dash two and here it will come very and so and it will be so so and so so and so and that okay so there is a blank which is filled by that adjective all right so this is the rule number seven now we go on to rule number eight here just look at the sentence at the time of the matter going to press the man went missing so at the time of okay at the time of means when all right so here what happens the matter was going to press and the man went missing okay and here it would be when the matter was going to press the man went missing at a clause of time at the age of again this is time at the age of increasing speed of life people are becoming robots so what is a compound the speed of life is increasing and the people are becoming robots okay so this is connected this is very simple see the complex as the speed of life is increasing now see please note this as is not describing the reason it is telling you about the time so as the speed of life is increasing people are becoming robots okay so now here at the time of me cleaning the house she came so i was cleaning the house and she came and she came when i was cleaning the house okay so here whenever it is at the time of or at the age of or during please note it's as simple as just adding an and and here complex will be then or as to indicate adverb clause of time okay now the last rule the ninth rule is this i saw a man eating eggs so eating so it's a participle so how would you write i saw a man and he was eating egg so and and then this is another very very simple one using relative clause here i saw a man who was eating eggs it's a relative pronoun okay she is a prolific writer she is a writer and she is prolific so here it would be she is a writer who is prolific here is the lamb with snow white fleece okay this is the simple sentence so see here is the lamb and its fleece is snow white here is the lamb whose fleece is snow white so here whose is you see here whose is you so who whose these are relative pronouns so see here fine so whenever there is a participle 
or an adjectival phrase, you put an and here and you have relative pronouns used here. That is who, whose, whom, which or that. So this is the ninth rule. This, uh, this way we have finished all the nine rules. These nine rules will help you to identify what are the uh, type of sentences and also to transform them into another form, into another type. Okay, now here there are some examples. See here, to his utter dismay, his plan failed. So how will you make it compound? His plan failed and it was to his utter dismay. And it was to his utter dismay that his plan failed. Okay, that's a complex. Now let's see, he likes cakes as well as savouries. So it is a simple sentence. But how he likes not only cakes, but also the savouries, also savoury. So it is compound sentence. Not only, but also these are correlative conjunctions that are used here. See this, he responded immediately to her question. Simple. So he responded as soon as she asked a question. Complex. As soon as. When. Okay. So these are some different kinds of examples. He confessed about his guilt. Now, this is a simple sentence. So, what did he confess? He confessed that he was guilty. Okay. Complex. You, how do you make it compound? It's not done here. But how would you make this a compound? He was guilty and he confessed it. That's it. He was guilty and he confessed it would be the compound for this part. All right. Let's see the next one. A spider saved King Bruce. So, how would you make it complex? This is simple. So, complex is it was a spider that saved his life. Okay, relative pronoun that, adjective clause. So, this is a complex. Okay, so if you want to make it compound, King Bruce's life was saved and it was a spider who did that. Now, that would look too uh, stretched, but if you really have to make it compound, then that is the way you could make it. Okay, so now this completes a transformation of simple to compound to complex. We know the nine rules. We have just done the nine rules. Keep them in mind. Revise them on and off and you make your own sentences based on them. Then you see you will never forget how to transform the three types into each other. Okay, so thank you very much. Hope you have understood this concept. This will help you to understand each type as well as to transform one to the other. So thank you very much for your attention.